Hi guys, welcome to Motivation Monday. And this week I wanted to go over a question that I received on last Motivation Monday's video. Keep in mind, if you ever have questions, post a comment below in the video and I will do my best to make a video for you. Here's the question from last week. How do I mentally handle the confused patient that constantly calls out for someone to sit with her? And I can't because there are others. At the end of a 12 hour shift, I'm angry and guilty for feeling angry. I feel manipulated by this patient. I feel bad about my thoughts towards this patient. Others feel the same way on my shift. It's so hard, so hard. I really like this question. You see, you can change your thoughts and feelings towards your circumstances. However, you cannot change your thoughts and feelings with the same beliefs and judgments that you are using at this time. In order to bring fruition to a new zest for your job and life, you must become conscious of the thoughts you're having that are creating pain. Remember, no matter what is going on on the outside, this is an inside game. Because it is our thought patterns, habits, and beliefs which are creating our reality. Once you take your power back and accept responsibility, you can bring about a new life with more power and energy than ever before. When I am faced in a very similar situation, there are a few things that I will not do. The first thing is I will not complain to other people about this problem. When you're complaining to other people about this problem, you are reliving the experience and you are attracting more like experiences. The other thing that I will not do is I will not react to the problem. If I do feel a reaction, maybe pain, fear, or anger, I do my best to neutralize it as fast as possible. We now know that we have the power to influence our environment. This is not theory, this is science. Dr. Masura Emoto proved that human consciousness has an effect on the molecular structure of water. He found that thoughts of fear or anger would make chaotic, ununiformed, and basically ugly structures in frozen water. He also found that positive thoughts of love, joy, peace, and harmony would bring about the most amazingly beautiful crystalline structures when the water was frozen. And guess what? Our bodies are made up of 70% water. So whether you realize it or not, we are shaping the environment around us, either for the good or bad at every moment. The fact is that we live in the world of effects. And while sometimes this does bring about depressing thoughts because of what we've created, it doesn't have to because we can create a new reality at will. It's not about stress management. Actually, this is not a very exciting concept for me. It's about changing your energetic vibration so that you can attract more of the situations you would like to experience. Science is proving many times over that when you go deeper and deeper into matter, there's only one thing that you will find. Matter simply doesn't exist. They may call it something different, particle theory, string theory, wave particle duality, whatever esoteric terms they use, it all boils down to one concept. Matter is not real. At the deepest level, there is only vibration. Therefore, if you want to change what you are experiencing on the outside, it's really simple. You just have to focus inward on changing your energetic vibration. So. How do you do that? Here are a few things that I do. The first thing I do is to protect myself. Whenever I have a patient or a person that's trying to take energy from me or push upon their negative energy to me, I immediately create an imaginary barrier. To me, this looks like a bubble, but what's amazing is as soon as I create this bubble, I immediately feel all of my energy come back to me and I feel less of my energy being depleted out into the environment. The next thing I do is I do my best to not react to their attacks. Sometimes this is difficult, but if I do find myself reacting, I will remove myself from the situation, create my protective barrier again, and then I will visualize the anger that I had, or maybe fear, whatever negative thought pattern it was, and then I visualize it evaporating into the air from my love. The next thing I do is I find a quiet area, or as quiet as possible. We all know how loud and 
congested hospitals can be, but sometimes I do this in the bathroom. What I do is I go to the bathroom and I close my eyes and I visualize myself being engulfed in this bubble of love that I've created. And then once I'm engulfed, I visualize the whole bathroom being engulfed in this love. But then I expand it out and I keep expanding it out. I expand it out to the hospital, I expand it out to the state that I'm in, I expand it out to the country, to the galaxy, and then finally to the universe. And then when I get to the universe, I start visualizing white light. And then when I'm connected to this white light, I take whatever situation was irritating me and then I change it around into something that would make me extremely happy. Here I replace my courage with fear, my guilt with pride, and my anger with patience. And then from this place of infinite love, I then ask for guidance. The next key is to tune into your intuition and listen out for that guidance. Sometimes it may be a quick answer. Other times it may come to you in bits and pieces. The key is to remain open. Some answers that have come to me when I've been responding to a similar situation is to take my patient with me. So one day I put my patient in a wheelchair and I wheeled her around from room to room. When I went into another patient's room, I just kind of parked her outside where I could still see her and I cared for the other patient and it really worked out and it was actually kind of fun. It was good for the patient because she got out of the room and she was so much calmer since she was out of the room and she was just happy because she could see me. That was one thing. <laughs> Another idea that came to me was to make sure that all of my patient's physical needs were met. Are they in a loving, healing environment? Are they fed? Are they hungry? Do they need to be changed? Looking after their basic needs is sometimes all we need to do. Other answers that have come to me is to call their family. Sometimes just making a phone call and letting the son or daughter or or loved ones speak to the patient has an extremely amazing calming effect. One day I even called the patient's daughter and she gave me a list of 10 people to let my patient call. We called each person one by one and it was really amazing to see my patient after that. <laughs> There have been times when the only answer that I have received is to keep on keeping on and to request to not have this patient tomorrow. That is completely okay. Open yourself up to the possibility of creating magic moments and I promise you, you will. You can find an amazing solution to every problem you experience. You are not a victim of your circumstances. You are a powerful, conscious being capable of creating an amazing life. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I love you so much. Thank you for giving me this purpose, and I cannot wait to see you next Monday. I love you. Bye.